If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello, Magic Community on YouTube. T1 Glistener Elf here with a not so brand new deck, but one that's become a favorite of mine, even though it's not all that viable, I suppose. This is Legacy. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> this is Legacy Ley... You know, that, that totally worked. The sleeves are a little too sticky for that. Legacy Ley Lines. You see this word? <laughs> what that word effectively means is everything that you see here. This first line. If Ley Line of whatever, that needs to be an uncard, is in your opening hand, you may begin the game with it on the battlefield. The rest of this text sometimes matters, but this is what we care about. Effectively, that means that it costs zero mana if it's in your opening hand. I have 27 of these suckers in here, and we'll get into all of them, don't worry, you don't have to pause the video just yet, we'll go into some detail, but 27 of these things, <laughs> which means that this deck is doing something degenerate and fun, and frankly funny, I think. Uh, so for right now, just understand that there are 27 cards that start the, ba start the game on the field. That's what matters. Also understand that they are enchantments. I know, duh, right? But that, that matters here. Because, and we're going we're gonna to get to them in just a little bit, but for right now, we start off with... Now, if you want to go and get this deck, it is a fun deck. But, <laughs> the reason I can't recommend you doing it unless you really are sure is because these suckers are reserve list cards. These are Sarah's Sanctum. Very simply, add white to your mana pool for each enchantment you control. So think Gaia's Cradle, but makes white instead of green, and it makes it for enchantments instead of creatures. So on your first turn, oh look, we have <laughs> we have a stupid number of enchantments on the field. So turn one, make two, three, four, five mana. I think five is the most that I've ever done, but of course you can get higher than that, you can get six. Oh my goodness, this is such a stupid card. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this card, in fact, is so important to what the deck is trying to do that we aren't just running four copies. We're actually running eight. <laughs> this is a crop rotation. So, instant, uh, sacrifice a land when you cast it, search your library for a land card, and put that into play. It doesn't come in tapped, just put it into play. Well, lo and behold, this is what we're getting. We're getting Sarah Sanctum. Theoretically, we could play something in the sideboard like Bajuka Bog or Caracas, but that card is so important to what we're trying to do that no, not not really, not realistically. Although those could be options for you, uh, but that's not what we're doing. <laughs> and <laughs> okay, so we've made a bunch of mana. Now, what are we going to do with all of that mana? Well, for starters, we happen to have Enlightened Tutor. Sorry about the glare. One mana instant. <laughs> Search your library for an artifact or enchantment card, and reveal that card to all players, shuffle it, put it on top of your deck. So it doesn't go to hand, of course, for one mana. Good grief. Artifact or enchantment. Well, what are we going and getting with Enlightened Tutor? Other than a hate card, if we absolutely need it, typically what we're doing is we are getting good old Opalescence. <laughs> so it's four mana. <laughs> we can generate that mana on turn one. Each other global enchantment, in other words, not an aura, is a creature with power and toughness each equal to its converted mana cost. Oh look, that's another thing I should have pointed out. They're all CMC4. If this deck seems ridiculous at this point, that's because it is. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now, importantly, I should note, if you want to do maximum silliness, uh, when they come down at the start of the game, it's actually not considered... It, on turn one, they're not summoning sick. They started the game in play, they didn't come down on turn one. They're not summoning sick. If you turn them into creatures with opalescence, you can get the turn one kill. Say that your hand is five ley lines, Sarah Sanctum, opalescence. Congrats on your turn one win, assuming you survive force of will. Okay, that is so... Oh my, oh my goodness, I have so much fun with this deck. You can see why it's not all that viable <laughs> when your deck just outright loses to force of will. But we have some sideboard stuff for that. Now, let's say you don't have Opalescence. Um, what, 
One of the ley lines, I, I do need to get to this one off the bat, is ley line of the void. So, if a card would be put into an opponent's graveyard, remove it from the game instead. You see this against Dredge, for instance. What that means is that they're not going to get a graveyard. Everything gets exiled if it would go to the grave. Okay, with that context, Helm of Obedience. <laughs> this card is... There is a mile of text on there, but basically what it means in the context of this deck is if you have Leyline of the Void, and if you cast Helm, and if you tap it and pay X, where X is at least one mana, then they will exile their, their whole deck. Uh, a card, they'll try... Uh, I actually really do need to explain it, don't I? Okay, so you put the top card of target opponent's library into their grave, and you check until you reach X cards or a creature card. If it's a creature, stop right there. Uh, if it's not a creature, keep going until you reach X. So if you were playing this card fairly, let's say I make X5. So if the top five cards don't contain a creature, well, sorry. If that happens, uh, actually I do need to say, if the last card put into a graveyard is a creature, you sacrifice this and put that creature into play under your control as if it were cast. So let's say I hit a Grizzlebrand, congrats, I get a Grizzlebrand. If I hit a Deathrite Shaman, I get a Deathrite Shaman, so on and so forth. What we want to do, though, this has to make it hit the graveyard. If it doesn't hit the graveyard, then it's going to keep going and going and going and going. Well, thanks to Leyline of the Void, they don't hit the graveyard, they just get exiled. So you pay one mana to start the process, and it takes out their whole deck. Ta-da! And that is my... Um, non-judge explanation of that card. That's the Cliff Notes version. That's what it practically does. Uh, now, as you can see, this is a degenerate combo. But, we really need Sarah's Sanctum. Like, really badly. If you know anything about Vintage, you probably know about Vintage Dredge. Vintage Dredge wants Bazaar of Baghdad so badly that it's willing to play four Serum Powder to get there. And we do kind of the same thing. This is Sarah Sanctum 9 through 12. Anytime you could mulligan, so before the game has started, and this card is in your opening hand, you may instead remove that hand from the game, then draw that many cards. So let's say it's my first hand, I have seven cards, and I see one of them is Serum Powder, and I don't see a Sarah Sanctum. Well, what I can do is I can exile that hand, including the Serum Powder, and just draw another seven. And that means that I don't... It's like a mulligan, but it's a free mulligan. The cost is that this is a dead card outside of that context. Most of the time. No, basically, this is a dead card otherwise. Uh, but that's, that's how badly we need Sarah's Sanctum. It's, it's pretty silly. Uh, if you only have eight copies of a card, then your odds of getting it are in the 60s, so, uh, in your opening hand. 65%, I want to say. Uh, when you have 12 copies, it goes way up. So the deck oddly becomes consistent. In a, well, consistent as far as getting Sanctum goes. Now, for Ley Lines, that's a slightly different story. Okay. Now, if this is all we're doing, this deck is terrible. <laughs> uh, our opponent is going to be able to, if we don't have it right off the bat, uh, like, let, let's say we, they force a will us. Well, no, we need to do something to stop them. Um, or... I, I don't know. Basically what I'm trying to say is we need hate cards in the deck. We need to do something to slow the opponent down. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's weird to say. There's Suppression Field. Long story short, this is Suppression Field. Activated abilities cost two more to play unless they're mana abilities. You can get your opponent stuck on fetch lands. They won't be able to crack their fetch lands uh, because, lo and behold, that's not a mana ability and it'll cost two more. And it, it takes mana to make mana in that case, so Suppression Field is great. Turn 1, Sarah Sanctum, 2 Ley Line, Suppression Field, lock the opponent. Not hard lock, obviously, but keep them out of the game for long enough that even if you can't go off on the first turn, you'll eventually get there. That's what I meant to say. Long story short, that's what I meant to say. Now, we don't just have Enlightened Tutor for finding Opalescence at all. We have Idyllic Tutor, which ideally... Uh, see what I did there, we'll come down on turn one with three ley lines to go and get us whatever we need. Now, it only gets enchantments, but yeah, hey, that's an enchantment. Yay. Okay. <laughs> now, we do have a few more lands. This deck obviously isn't just doing Sarah Sanctum. After all, we have crop rotation, which means we have to have some lands that make green. Well, we do have 
for Horizon Canopies. And in the, the list that inspired this, one that I saw uh, at, in some SCG games, Horizon Canopy was not in the list, and I, I had to scratch my head for a while for why it wasn't. It makes the two colors that you're realistically ever going to use, it makes green and white, uh, it does require you to pay one life, but that deck had City of Brass and Mana Confluence, which also make you pay life. And, in a pinch, you can sacrifice this to draw a card, if you just happen to get flooded or whatnot, or need to find a certain card. Uh, okay, why not have Horizon Canopy? I think there is actually a reason. You may have noticed when I was flipping through, not all of these Ley Lines are white or green. Especially Ley Line of the Void, it's black. Sometimes, in some corner cases, you may want to actually cast those out of your hand. Maybe. But the vast majority of the time, it's more important to have Horizon Canopy because it can actually draw you out of a situation. Uh, so that's why I'm running four Horizon Canopies, and frankly, I would run more if I could. Uh, but we do have two Gemstone Mines. The, you rarely ever, rarely ever need a land that lasts for more than three taps. Uh, and so, City of Brass and Mana Confluence don't seem that important. Plus, it might actually end up mattering that they cost us life. If we were a version that wanted to cast Leyland of the Void in a pinch, for instance, then maybe you want the others instead. Uh, but because I don't, these are basically just the next ones that I have. And they don't end up hurting if we actually do, for whatever reason, need to. Now, for this part, I'm actually having to do a second take, because this next part is complicated enough, I don't think I explained it very well the first time, so I'm sorry for that. Here you go, this is a uh, Tree of Tales. This is uh, one more nice little land. Enlightened Tutor doesn't just go and get these kinds of artifacts and enchantments. You'll note that this card, it's banned in modern for a reason. It's an artifact land, and it does make green mana. And the way that this ends up coming up is if we need to enlighten tutor for a land that we can sack to crop rotation to get Sarah's Sanctum, that's the reason why we have it. Now, you may be thinking, well, wait a minute. If you have a land to play enlighten tutor and crop rotation, couldn't you just crop rotate that land for Sarah's Sanctum? And yes, that is true. But, there is a reason why we have this, and that's because, let's say that, for example, you started off with three Ley Lines in your opening hand, which is the, uh, the mean, not mean, the median number. <laughs> you will typically have three Ley Lines in your opening hand, more often than any other number. If that's the case, then a Sarah Sanctum on its own isn't going to make enough mana for Opalescence. So what you'll be able to do is you'll have one of your lands that can effectively, through that combo I just mentioned, Enlightened Tutor to get Tree of Tales, you'll have two lands, then you'll crop rotate this one into a Sarah Sanctum, and you'll have four mana. That's the reason why we have it that way. Uh, it doesn't have to, and there is a bit of an opportunity cost to Tree of Tales, admittedly. It not making white, only making green, can end up coming up. The main way that it does, though, is if this is the only land in your hand and you have Enlightened Tutor, well, you actually can't cast Enlightened Tutor. That, that does end up being a bit of a problem. Teeny, tiny, tiny opportunity cost, though. Alright, that is the main deck. Now, actually, it's not. I, I need to go through the ley lines. Here we go. So we have four ley line of You Have Hexproof. That's what this is. You Have Hexproof. Um, I'm just going to very quickly go over what they do. This is ley line of One Sided Rest in Peace. <laughs> when you think of them this way, this is Ley Line of Skullcrack. <laughs> or Flaring Pain. This is Ley Line of Teferi. You have Flash. Your stuff has Flash. Okay, now I, I like to joke that there are three kinds of uh, ley lines, and shoutouts to whichever SCG commentator gave me the inspiration for this. They basically said this. I'm basically paraphrasing them. Uh, three kinds of ley lines. Those that help you slash hurt your opponents, those that do nothing, or basically nothing, and those that can hurt you. Okay, so we are playing these because they help us and or hurt the opponent. Hexproof is extremely important. Hitting their grave is extremely important. You get free wins off of these, sometimes. Absolutely, especially in game one. Punishment can make a difference. Anticipation can make a difference. Uh, now we get into the ones that do nothing. 
we have Ley Line of Vitality. Creatures you control get plus zero, plus one. Notice all the creatures in this deck. There are no creatures. It can actually end up making a little bit of a difference because once Opalescence is online, your Ley Lines will become four fives instead of four fours, but how often is that going to matter? And then whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may gain one life. I have literally never, ever done that with this card before. <laughs> Especially in this deck. Next we have Leyline of does actual factual nothing. Creature spells can't be countered. So again, you're not casting any creatures, so that doesn't matter for you. And you don't play counter spells, so it doesn't matter that your opponent's creatures can't be countered. This does actual factual nothing. It is just four mana, except no mana, comes onto the battlefield on turn zero. That's it. That's all we care about. And then we have three ley lines that can hurt us. They have actually hurt me before. Ley line of the meek. Ley line of anthem for tokens. So creature tokens get plus one, plus one. Not creature tokens you control. Creature tokens. If your opponent is playing Lingering Souls or Monastery Mentor or Young Pyromancer or whatever the case may be, Batter Skull, that, that's a token. This can hurt, <laughs> especially with Batter Skull because it ups the clock by a whole turn. You're doing five damage instead of four. <laughs> okay, so this one is the first one we take out. Uh, pretty much every time. This is the first one we take out. I cannot think of an uh, of a reason why we would do anything else. Because at least Leyline does nothing. Uh, Leyline. Can I be more specific? Life Force does nothing. Meek can end up hurting us. And that is the main board. Now for the sideboard really quickly. If we're playing against a Force of Will deck, we side in four Chancellors of the Annex. Uh, three Leyline with the Meek out. Often one Serum Vision is how we'll do it. So, Chancellor of the Annex, uh, it, reveal it from your opening hand. I like this effect, can you tell? And uh, it force spikes the first spell they cast. And then while it's on the field, counter it unless that p player pays one The first, whenever they cast a spell. You can realistically cast this in the deck. I say realistically. It, it is possible with Sarah Sanctum and enough time. You'll get your Ley Lines on the opening turns. You'll get Suppression Field. You'll get Opalescence. Uh, you might be able later down the line to cast a Sanctity or a Meek, uh, and, or a light Vitality and Life Force, and you can actually just get to enough mana where you can cast Chancellor, um, which I have done before, and it's, it's, it's fun. It sure is. Uh, next we have a One of Ghostly Prison, which we can of course tutor up with either Enlightened Tutor or Idyllic Tutor. Just stop Swarm Strategies. Uh, turn one, if the opponent goes off with Empty the Warrens, you might be able to make enough mana to cast Ghostly Prison, or turn two, perhaps. Uh, easy enough. Oblivion Ring is our next go-to. This is basically to stop hate cards. That's pretty much its only purpose. We can find it in our opening hand or tutor it up, and just takes care of whatever's keeping us from winning. If the opponent happens to have, say, an Ensnaring Bridge, Oblivion Ring to get rid of it, Thalia does make it kind of hard on us, um, you know, etc. Something like that. Cool, and there are three of them. They're that important. Just in case Leyline of the Void wasn't enough graveyard hate, we have Rest in Peace. You should not lose to a graveyard deck with this. Y your dredge match is the one extremely lopsided match that this deck has. <laughs> and this is part of the reason why. Four mainboard hate cards, and three in the sideboard, and a bunch of ways to tutor them up. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a silly match. And that's also part of the reason why we don't have a Bajuka Bog to crop rotate for in the sideboard. The match is already that solid. Uh, next we have a single copy of Rule of Law for Storm decks, or anything that wants to cast a bunch of spells per turn. Uh, so High Tide, for instance, as well. Just one spell per turn. That's it. That's all you get. And then we have two Paths to Exile. This is Legacy. Not that many decks, well I say not that many, relative to say modern, have even a single basic land in them. For example, Delver decks might not, Deathblade and Stoneblade decks might not, uh, Path to Exiles can sometimes just be that good. And even so, there are some times when even if you're giving them a land, you still need to have it. Again, I mentioned uh, Thalia earlier. Thalia can make it awfully hard for you to go off. The difference between 4 mana and 5 mana for Opalescence can be hugely consequential. And then lastly, we do have one land that we can crop rotate for, and that is the Tabernacle at Pendril Vale. 
for aggro decks, for or, or even just creature combo decks, etc. So elves, uh, I would bring it in against burn. Uh, in addition, of course, to the four main uh, main board ley lines of sanctity, just anything that could use a bunch of creatures out, or that doesn't have a lot of mana on its own. Uh, and so, yeah, it's. It, <laughs> It's pretty good, I hear. It doesn't make any mana on its own, but it is on the reserve list. It cost about one million dollars. It cost about 850 last I checked at TCG Low for a poor condition one. As you can see, this thing isn't real. <laughs> um, there's no way on earth I could afford this right now. Okay. So that is the deck. That is Legacy Leylines, which is the silliest, derpiest deck that I've ever had the chance to play. It is so much fun. As much as I think that everyone should try it at least once, if you're actually going to buy it, that card right there is the reason why you're not going to be able to do it. No siree. All right, <laughs> take care, Magic Community. I will see you later. If you have any suggestions for the deck, please feel more than free to let me know. In the meantime, take care. Bye-bye.